Arsenal uh, win that possession and it's broken nicely to Gazzola 30 metres from goal plays it to the edge of the area Alexis Sanchez goes for goal and scores that's a brilliant goal from Alexis Sanchez he's been Arsenal's star man this season and maybe now they're going to get the point Take two. <laughs> Welcome to Gooners in the USA podcast, ladies and gents. How are you today, Mike? I am doing well. I'm doing very, very well today. Good. No game today, so uh, I can't go wrong. No game today. And Mike, you're podcasting from a special location. Please share with us <laughs> where you are. Yes. He, here is how dedicated I am to this podcast, ladies and gentlemen. You, the, the good news is I'm in the lovely town of Williamsburg, Virginia, which is about a few hours from my home. It's a town hugely notable for its role in the U.S. gaining independence from our vicious overlords from that country across the Atlantic. Uh, we would we would never uh, never want any way other than that. But I must tell you the bad news. The Internet in my hotel and, frankly, this entire city is exactly the same strength as it was during the Revolutionary War. Uh, so I am coming to you today from my car, parked outside a fucking Starbucks, siphoning off their Internet access like a schmuck. But the podcast must go on, and that's, uh, that's where we are today. Excellent. And today we have uh, two special guests with us. We have Tom from Guna Talk TV and Craig, who founded Guna Talk TV, and now has a new podcast that he does with Mems, the guy who likes to take shits, called <laughs> Same Old Arsenal. <laughs> so, Mike, I'll let you introduce our guests a little further and deeper. You like to go deep Absolutely. with our guests. Well, I don't think either one of them needs that. But, uh, I, boys, it's been it's something I've been looking forward to uh, for a long time, uh, having you guys on the podcast. So thanks for joining us. No, no thank you. Thank you very much for having us on. Um, delighted. Delighted. Hello, America. Hello. Hello, USA. That's right. Every single person in the U.S. right now is listening, so you better make this good. <laughs> yeah. Craig, Craig, starting with you, um, I, I have to say I first became aware of you and, and the Gooner Talk TV right about the time we first started podcasting back in August, which is really when I started listening to a lot of the other podcasts out there. And, and at that point, you were still doing the Gooner Talk TV. Is mm-hmm. that right? Yeah, I was. I was. I was still doing it in August, yeah. Um, yeah, tell our listeners that, that made it, you know, the, the handful yeah, I mean, that may not already be familiar with you, yeah. kind of how you got started. Well, I mean, I I used to, you know, I was like most Arsenal fans, you know, I used to watch Arsenal fan TV, you know, and things like this. And I was just sitting there one night and I said, you know what, perhaps, perhaps I could do something like this. Um, so I started it and I said, <laughs> you know, let's see how it goes. And the first week... The first week or so, I've got about 300 subscribers on YouTube, and I was thinking to myself, goodness me, 300 subscribers in a week. I didn't um, know there were that many people in Britain. You, you, well, that's it. This is it. <laughs> and that's why I was so surprised. But um, So I, I carried on doing it, and uh, as the months and weeks went by, I was getting more and more and more subscribers. We were getting, I was getting, you know, more and more views, and I think people started to take the Guna talk a bit seriously, and... Uh, so I said, well, I think, you know, I better up my game here now. And I started getting on a few a few guests, you know, the likes of DT and Claude and and Mims and Kenny Ken. And, you know, these people that you know, that, that um, are on Arsenal Fan TV. And, and, and they helped me a lot, them boys, you know. Yeah. Um, and, then, and, and then I met Tom and Tom came on and me and Tom became really good friends from it. And then... Um, Unfortunately, it started to take up too much of my time. I've got a young family. Uh, it was it was getting to the point where are they all young or just the kids? Oh, just the kids, just the kids, <laughs> okay. um, just the kids. Uh, I've lost my train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it started taking up because I noticed probably uh, a few months ago that uh, there was kind of a changing of the guard, as you if you would. Uh, there was a changing the of the guard. Um, I. It was taking up too much of my time. I, I was coming home from work, and it was, you know, what what can I do with the gooner talk, the gooner talk, the gooner talk, you know? Um, I was ignoring I don't, I, it's sh- I, I, absolutely shameless, to, shameful to say that I was with kids, I was, igno- I was ignoring my wife. You built a monster. Yeah, yes, I did, and the monster took over me. Um, and it wasn't until my wife sat me down one night and said, you, you have to stop this, because this is, you know, this is ridiculous. So, uh, I so a few months, so a few months later, had, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, yeah, we, we, we spoke about that. Um, the Guna talk was something I was just working at 
every night. Um, it wasn't healthy, you know. Uh, the, the, the same old AFC podcast now is more more of, you know, what, what we're doing here, you know, lads in the pub having a chat about Arsenal. Whereas the Guna talk, I put a lot of work into the Guna talk, you know, doing research, you know, getting the guests, you know, getting statistics from games and and things like that. So it, it was taking too much of my time. It was taking over, uh, it was, well, it was taking over my life. Um, and that's where, you're, uh, that's where young Tom Canton Mm. Came to my rescue and uh, took it over because I was already for I was already to, you know to let it go to let it drop um, and I know there's there's a lot of fans there now I think Tom there's about well you get you're close to seven thousand subs I think now um, a lot of subscribers to put it you know to let it go to waste um, so so Tom came in and uh, Tom took it over. That's excellent. And, and, and before we switch over to Tom, you, you've done maybe three or four of the new, uh, the same old Arsenal podcast now. We've done three. Now. Yeah, three we've done them. three. And, um, I've got to say, it, it, it's really, really, well, I hope Tom doesn't take offense to this, but it's, it, it's, I'm finding it more enjoyable doing it this way, um, that, than I, than I was finding it doing the Guna talk. Um, well, it, it's a, it's a completely different podcast. I mean, one one of them is 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 live. Uh, yeah. it, it's yeah. it's really breaking down kind of everything Arsenal that's going on in a in a roundtable format. I've listened to the new podcast, and and I mean, it's it, it literally is just a, a bunch of people who, frankly, most of your listeners probably know of, yeah. um, or have heard of, just talking shit and a lot a lot of yeah. stuff from from the 70s and 80s that a lot of the modern arsenal fans and and recent arsenal supporters might not be aware of and, that's right that's and, right i mean and, we and, are, we have lee judges on there you know um again another another that i've become really good friends with um over the over the past year and a half um lee's been supporting arsenal for you know lee supported arsenal all his life and some of the stories lee has got 100, 120 130 years at least yeah you know some of the stories, some of the stories that he's got that are fantastic, and you know you'd, you 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 want every Arsenal fan to hear them. And and if you listen to no other podcast, and and, and if you have five minutes to listen to any podcast, to, tune into episode two, where <laughs> co-host Mems uh, just thinks so much of the podcast that he takes his computer into the toilet to take a shit during the podcast <laughs> and gets called out on it by Craig. It's the, it's the most wonderful it's podcast yeah. gold. The best thing about it was he tries to deny it. That, that, that's the best thing. That's the best. Well, I, I said, what are you doing, Mems? Uh, nothing. Uh, I've just gone into another room. Craig, you, it's surprising you beat him on here because I was, I was talking with him for about about two weeks ago to get him on as a guest, and then Mike all of a sudden said, I already got Craig, so boom. Yep. Well, there you go. We're, but, working, uh, all of our, we're but, working all of our back channels. Uh, but now, but so. now, if he comes on the podcast, I think I feel like he should just take a shit through the entire thing. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm sure you would oblige. Because <laughs> we'll give him, we'll Every, give him prunes and stuff like for three yeah. days leading up to the podcast. It'll be he's like a, prepping a for a colonoscopy. Guy. If he can help you out, he will. Yeah, no, he <laughs> is. He's a good. He's a good guy. So Tom, uh, obviously this is this is where you came into the Gunner talk, and 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 we've been communicating. You were you were kind enough to have me on after, uh, of course, after one of the worst games of the entire season, the Bayern, or, well, the worst <laughs> yeah. game. Um, but uh, you know, I, I certainly enjoyed being a panelist on there. It's it's a it's a pressure filled. It's a different type of situation than this bullshit yeah. that we do here. Um, but uh, how how is the Gunner Talk TV treating you so far? It's I mean it's good uh, and. I didn't appreciate, it has to be said, when I was just to guess how much work it actually is. And I do appreciate that now. And I have the utmost respect for Craig of what he did while he started the show. Because at the moment, you have to think back and say starting something is the hardest part. I have, I have taken it on and what I'm doing is a lot easier compared to what Craig had to do. Start it off, get it off the ground, get followers, get people knowing about it, get people listening keep a, a loyal fan base because you can have people who come and go but it's bu- building up that loyal fan base that's really important to a show which is what Craig is having to do all over again uh, with the new show which is going great and I've listened to it it's absolutely fantastic um, but it is literally you as, as you've been on we, we sit we chat before we go on we, we do the show for an hour an hour and a bit and then we chat a little bit afterwards and then once everyone goes as the host you then sit there 
edit it down, add the music on, which I do now for our SoundCloud channel, upload it, which f- annoyingly SoundCloud takes ages to, <laughs> to upload something. So you're sitting there at half 11, 12 o'clock at night, finally uploading it, and then tweeting out all the images, all the pictures, trying to get it out more and more. And it's a lot of work, but it's, it's rewarding and it's really enjoyable. And I have the utmost respect of Craig for doing it. And I'm very thankful that he allowed me to continue doing it. So, Andy, how is it that you spend, like, five or six minutes uh, after the podcast is over and suddenly <laughs> online? <laughs> I mean... I'm kidding. I, 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 Andy I, spends I know all of kidding, his time. But, but it's just... I, I genuinely didn't understand how much work it is beyond just recording. It, it, I, I genuinely didn't know, and it was a shock when it first came about. And I thought, oh, this is all right. I've got, I've got a show basically handed to me. Um and it's going to be it's going to be really enjoyable, really fun, and it is. But it is a lot of work, mm. and I don't think a lot of people appreciate that, especially when um, you, you get the classic Twitter trolls and you get the stuff saying, uh, as Craig knows, I told him saying he always gets a lot of people saying like, "Where's Craig gone? I'd w- bring Craig back and all this." And it's, at the same time, it's like Craig doesn't want to come back. That's Craig. <laughs> Craig's got <laughs> multiple no accounts saying, "Bring him back." Yeah. <laughs> I'm, right, I'm yeah. sitting here like uh, I'm trying so hard. <laughs> no one wants me. <laughs> Why won't well, someone actually, love me? Yeah. Excellent. Well, I mean, uh, fellas, uh, both podcasts are are unique. They're different and 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 worth a watch. So we hope anyone that's listening to us that that didn't find us via you or or that isn't already aware of you guys, check them out. It's great stuff. And and uh, you can get the live uh, the live Gunner talks on uh, Thursday afternoons if you're in the U.S. evenings uh, over in the U.K. Uh, each week, and um, and then same old Arsenal comes on what Thursday nights, Friday night, every Wednesday night. Uh, Wednesday it's normally uploaded. It's normally uploaded at about eleven o'clock London time. So whatever eleven o'clock at night London time is, to where you guys are. Perfect. Well, I'm 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 looking forward to the rest of the pod. Andy, you want to get into it? Yeah, let's do it. So we're going to go to our host question of the week. Uh, we're going to have some fun with this one or serious. It, it doesn't matter which, which direction you want to go. But So here's the question. You wake up and you have entire control of Arsenal FC. It's basically like you've turned into Stan Kroenke. So I'll go to Craig first. Tell me what you would do if you were in that situation and tomorrow you wake up and you are Stan Kroenke or you're, you're set. Well, I don't know if you'd want to be – you may want his mustache. I was going to say, after you after you yeah. bristle your fingers through your mustache, yeah. then what do you do? Then what would you do? Like, what would be your next step? Well, I, if I was Stan Kroenke, if I woke up tomorrow and I was Stan Kroenke, I would pull Arsene Wenger into the office and I would say, Arsene, what is it you need? Tell me. Who is it you need? Tell me. You know, what what do you think? Why can't you, you know, why can't you win the league with the team that you've got? Okay, I'm going to give you one more chance. I'm going to give you one more year. How much money do you need? And Arsene could turn around to me and he could say, Mr. Kroenke, I need 300 million. I'd say, right, there you are, Arsene. Your 300 million. This will be spent by the first game of the season. All the players must be in the team. All the, you know, they must be here. None of this two weeks down the line. Um, they join. It's got to be, you, you've got to be ready for the start of the season. And I'd give him another year. Um, only. I'm, sh- I'm shocked if, to hear you if, say that, actually, Craig. Only, only, I'd only give him another year if this happened. <laughs> <laughs> if he, if he come out tomorrow and, and Stan Kroenke come out and he said, right, I'm giving Arsene Wenger 300 million, I'd say, right. I'll give him another year. I'll give him one more year. Hmm. But only, you know, only for the that's only for the answer to that question. My feelings at the moment are that you know he's got to, he needs to move on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Mike, what about you? Well, I mean, the obvious answers to this would be spend more money, resign Alexis, resign Wenger, fire Wenger, whatever. One of those things. But I'm not one for obvious answers. So. Um, I mean, the club and its supporters are in turmoil right now. There's no question about that. Civil war kind of situation. And most people think we need to fix it. But I say, if I were Stan Kroenke, I would embrace it. And the first thing I would do is rename the east and the west stand of the Emirates. So basically, by the end of the day, you've got four seating areas called the North Bank, the Clock End, 
the Wenger out end and the Wenger in end. And then, <laughs> all right. I mean, East and West has really never been that important to begin with. So then we just reallocate all the supporter seats based on how they complete an online survey. So we kind of know who's, who's from which camp <laughs> and end up with a super intense seating sections that feed off of their own energy. I mean, the atmosphere. I'd love to see that. Yeah. <laughs> So, I mean, you know, if, if, if anyone, and, and we know that we have, you know, 89% crossover with the audience that watches the WWE, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, I know at least one person does, but uh, there's this thing where a guy named John Cena is so polarizing ap uh, among the fans that half the crowd chants at the top of their lungs, let's go Cena, and then responsibly the rest of the crowd goes, Cena sucks. And it's just back and forth, and uh, like him or hate him, the crowd is loud. So as long as we're dealing with this fan divide, I mean, if I own Arsenal, I would just make the most of it and monetize it and just embrace it and turn each match into a big screaming and shouting fest. And finally, the atmosphere problem is solved. So, you know, if that doesn't work, I would sign Griezmann, Dybala, Mbappe, and, uh, and Lewandowski and, and, and make a day of it. But You but know, what you could do too, Mike, is you could add um – like uh, your your halftime show could be Arsenal fan TV. Robbie could just go in and start interviewing people in in various sections I'm live saying, at so halftime, <laughs> and that will just really get people going. Uh, I mean, the, the only the, some people you know there's the only the only bad publicity is no publicity. Well, I mean, if you just just amp up the energy at the Emirates, it can be it can be hate, it could be love, it doesn't matter. But uh, you know, at least there'd be some energy, there'd be some something to leave there thinking about, and and. Well, that's uh, great. and that would be my suggestion. Tom, I hope you don't go, shit, Mike just stole my answer. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, word for word, it was exactly the same. No, um, I mean, Craig's, Craig's answer was pretty much spot on to my serious side of thoughts of it. It's, it would be give give the manager as much money and, and just ask him what he wants. But in terms of, of the stadium, one, I would lock all of the halftime refreshment vendors until the referee blows his whistle for uh, half time to ooh. stop people running away to get a bloody sausage roll while the game is still going on. That's probably the first thing I would do. Shite and, sausage rolls at that. Sorry. Mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. 100%. And watered down Heineken. Mm -hmm. um, and then second thing would be to It's easier to have two in 15 <laughs> minutes when they're watered down. Oh, oh, Pre-warning. <laughs> Apologies if your uh, mother or father is a steward at the Arsenal, but sack every single one of those stewards and then bring in, I don't know if anyone is, is familiar with the drum and bass scene, but a drum and bass artist usually has a, a crowd guy that, that <laughs> G's up the crowd box going on. Replace them all with every drum and bass artist crowd guy to get the crowd on their feet during the game. And just to stop saying sit down and do the exact opposite of that and encourage them to get on their feet and sing. That's what exactly what I would do. I just I, the atmosphere at the Emirates will grate my life uh, in, in, it, for eternity. And uh, besides pitch stuff, it's all about atmosphere and stopping people leaving for half-time beverages the top yeah. is poor. Yeah, the, <laughs> so, the, the only thing better than having two competing sections, you know, we, in the U.S. we don't have an away section, so you have away fans that are just sprinkled in. Uh, with with the home supporters and it's just a mess. And in, in, in Britain and everywhere else, you've got the away section, the home section going at each other, but three sections going at each other. I mean, that's even better than two, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> it sounds brilliant. Yeah. I, I'd love it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, Tom, was that your was that your final answer? <laughs> I mean, on, yes, yes, Chris Tarrant, that was my <laughs> So I, I kind of went the same route as Tom. I thought to myself, I'm going to go atmosphere at the Emirates. But first, I think I would allow Arson to leave after we've won the FA Cup. Um, I, I do my best to re-sign Ozil and Sanchez, obviously. I think I'd have to ultimately kidnap one of his dogs and hold it for <laughs> ransom. But then I would focus on the supporters. If I'm cronky rich, I'm okay with money. Um, so I'd drop ticket prices so they're lower than Bayern. I'd move the away supporters up into the heavens so we can't yes. hear or see them. Yeah. I'd section the stadium for supporters who want to sing and for those who just want to sit and enjoy the match. So we would have one, one area where it would just be energy. Hopefully the rest of the stadium would just buy into. And then I don't know how it is in, in 
Washington, Mike, but here uh, Kroenke actually hired um, these girls to clean the ice at the Colorado Avalanche NHL games, and they're scantily clad. So I'm going to follow Tom's. I'm going to remove all of the stewards, but I'm going to bring in women in bikinis. Hooters girls. <laughs> yeah, and so uh, and I'm going to have them get us pumped up and ready to go. <laughs> Nice. Yeah. So you'd bring in some bikini girls that could get you pumped up then. Yes. And I, I, everyone should be wearing sweatpants. <laughs> there, is one other thing. there is one other thing I'd like to see at the Emirates, and that's a geezer with a massive chainsaw and a bit of wood, like the Portland Timbers. There you go. Oh, oh yes. Like the best thing ever I've seen at a football the, match. The, the, uh, the it's one, absolutely the one thing brilliant. The one thing the U.S. has brought to football, to worldwide football, is, is a fucking lumberjack. It's yeah. lumberjack. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, Tom and Craig, I don't know if you know the relationship with the Colorado Rapids and Arsenal. Obviously, Kroenke owns both. They've That's been right, yeah. associated since 96. But the Rapids have a cannon with an Arsenal flag above it. And literally, whenever the Rapids score, no one knows when the cannon's going to go off, but it goes off within 20 seconds to maybe two minutes. Scares the shit out of everyone in the stadium. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe that's another thing we could bring in. Yeah, oh, maybe the, there needs to be a cannon at the Emirates, doesn't there? Maybe. Uh, well, good, good, good questions. Hey, that was better than I expected out of that shit <laughs> question that you asked. Oh, so. come on. <laughs> oh, I enjoyed that. Yeah, so there's good no, question. Thank there's you. The, Fuck there's you, no Mike. Game. Yeah. There's, there's, <laughs> I'm used to that. It's just usually off air. How do we cut Mike out of this pod? <laughs> yeah, but you got the right people to, to, to sort that out. So stop. It would take Tom 24 minutes to figure it out, but we'll do it. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's no game this week, which is a refreshing, uh, a refreshing difference from the normal podcast. Yeah. It, it's a relief. We get to cover a, uh, a veritable hodgepodge of topics and user questions this week. Um, and, and spend a little more time than we would normally spend on them, which is about an hour and a half. So, um, but we'll try to keep it short. What's the, uh, yeah, John Cross. Let's get him out of the way. <laughs> good old John Cross has gone on record. That's a good segue, uh, Mike. Yeah, well, speaking of things I'd like to get off uh, the podcast and away from Arsenal, John Cross has gone on record as saying Alexis has already decided to leave the team this summer. He happens to think Mesut Ozil is far more likely to stay and re-sign a new contract, and I, I, I'm suggesting that contract be for eighty thousand a week. Um, what are your thoughts about this, Andy? Does John Cross really have that deep of a connection to the club, or is he just a clickbait artist? He likes. He would like you to think that he does. Yeah. Um, and there's a lot of Arsenal supporters that think that he's on the payroll. Um, me being one of them. Because the stuff he writes is absolute bullshit. Every single word of it. Now, he's got this story about Alexis, about Alexis Sanchez wanting to leave um, from, from another bullshit story <laughs> that uh, there was uh, four lads on a stadium tour. Uh, at the Emirates, and apparently one of the <laughs> apparently one of the people that you know takes takes the people around on the tour told them that Alexis Sanchez is leaving Arsenal in the summer. Um, so John Cross has got his news from a tour guide from a tour guide, <laughs> and has put it out there uh, because obviously he's got the. the I'm not too sure if um, Americans are too familiar with the Daily Mirror, but this is the paper that he writes for. Um, there you go. He's made a story out of it, and he's put it out there, and he's getting all the yeah. attention that he wants. When, quite frankly, I don't believe it. I don't believe nothing that comes out of that bloke's mouth. No, I, I, I you know, I, I feel like Arsenal PR team do a good job at releasing to Ornstein stories uh, mm. a couple hours before a few minutes before it's about to drop so but yeah i just i feel like john cross is just a clickbait artist he just he is, he is. He, the more clicks he gets the more he gets paid so yeah exactly and, and uh, you know he i think the other thing in his locker he wrote a book about arsene wenger yeah. um and he'd like us to believe that arsene wenger actually sat next to him while he was writing it but yeah. um I don't think that happened. Yeah, I could write a book about Arsene Wenger as well, but that doesn't exactly. mean I'm going to have access to him. <laughs> and yours, yours, yours would probably be better than John Cross's. <laughs> well, I'm going to start working on that. As soon as I'm done, I'm going to go into the Starbucks and start writing my book. So. <laughs> uh, 
So uh, yeah, the bigger question I think though is when is uh, you know when we are in the inevitable draw against PSG in the Champions League group stages next year. How bittersweet is it going to be when Alexis gets a brace and makes a big deal out of not celebrating in front of us? I mean, it's. <laughs> I, I tend to think that he is probably leaning towards leaving. I, I, not because John Cross says he is, and, and I don't believe that it's done. But, I, you know, I, I think if he wanted to stay, he would have already re- extended. Mm-hmm. Mm, yeah. I mean, Tom, what do you think? Like worries me. Uh, I mean, Alexis is just... You see him at every game, don't you? It doesn't matter if it's Sutton or if it's Bayern Munich. He's annoyed uh, with the people who are around him, and it's certainly something he didn't have to deal with when he was at Barcelona. Um, it was more a case that Pep Guardiola was getting annoyed with him and his, his problems with running too much <laughs> that caused the major issues uh, for, for at Barcelona. But it's, if he, I mean, it's, it's where you sit on the line of, do you want players who want to play for the club like that the we love so much or is it do you sit on the side of we need to keep our best players no matter if it's the club they care about or the money they care about yeah uh, you know and the, the one good thing about about him leaving andy you have any idea what that would be <laughs> we get humber the fuck out of here i i, I mike I hates humber. that fucking dog Humber, Adam is cool, but Humber is, I'm telling you, Humber is the reason of all of this bad shit going on with Alexis. He's in his ear whispering a bunch of bullshit about, you know, to have a tantrum. Fuck, I've never man. heard this before. Everyone's in love. Every, shows how closely you listen to our podcast, but that's okay. Uh, no, Humber, uh, you know, Adam is cool. Everyone thinks those two dogs are great, but Humber is a motherfucking bitch, and, and he's going to be the death of us. So... Mike hates two Alexis. things, Humber and, Ale- uh, and Awobi. I don't hate Awobi. <laughs> no, so, I don't hate Awobi. That's either. not what you said on the podcast. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't hate him. I just think he needs to sit down for a little while, and I think Humber needs to have something happen to him that I would have a lot of people angry at him for saying. Have his hair brushed the wrong way. Yes, perhaps exactly. Humber, that, per, per, perhaps Humber needs to be dewormed. Or yes. something like that. He needs, yes, exactly. He needs, so speaking of leaving, The Guardian ran an article this week. Hector will leave if Arson leaves. Just signed oh. a new contract. Okay, I'm going to ask again, clickbait, or do we really think that's how these players are perceiving the next couple of seasons at Arsenal? Because clearly Wenger's not getting any younger, and so eventually he is going to leave. Um, do we buy into, or do you guys buy into the whole Ozil and Hector waiting to see what happens with Arsenal before they decide their future? I mean, for Hector, it doesn't well, Hector matter doesn't anymore, right? Because, yeah, he's stuck. But what do you guys think of that story that got run this week? Well, my, my dad always used to say to me, and, and, I, and I've, it's always stayed with me, and I've always, I've always had this, um, this thought about it. If you don't want to play for Arsenal, just leave. It doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother me if you're Mercer Ozil. It doesn't bother me if you're Alexis Sanchez. Leave. If you don't want to come and play for Arsenal, leave. If you're only here for the manager, leave. Mm-hmm. This thing with Hector Bellerin, saying that if, you know, it, it looked like, or the paper made it look like that Bellerin was saying that he will leave if Arsene Wenger leaves. That's fine, Hector. See you later, mate. Off you go. No problem. Toodaloo. Yeah. I'm not going to, as a fan, I'm not going to sit down and, 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 and bitch and moan about it. I'm not going to beg them to, I'm not going to beg them to stay. If they don't want to play for Arsenal Football Club, then leave. And I will support someone who does. And it, as far as players leaving, you know, that's, that's how I feel about it. I was the same with Henri. I was the same with Fabregas. I was the same with Nasri, Van Persie. You know, if you don't want to play for us, then go then. No problem, because someone else will come along and, and take your place. Yeah. So as far as I'm concerned, all this, all this stuff in the papers shouldn't – it doesn't affect me when I read it, um, that players are leaving and, and this and that and the other, um, because that's, that's, that's my thoughts on it. I, I yeah. support Arsenal Football Club. If you want to come and play for the football club, come and play for the football club. If you want to come and play for the badge, come and play for the badge. If you want to come and play for money, you can fuck off. Simple as that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and these kinds of statements, uh, I agree 100%. And, and I mean, the, the statements, if they're true, just it boggles me because their play on the field recently doesn't 
portray a team that is like solidly inspired by their leader, Arsene Wenger, and yet the comments are constantly about the respect that they have. I wouldn't have, you know, Koscielny even came out and said something uh, to the, uh, which I'll talk about in a little bit. But I mean, there's all this respect for for Arsene Wenger, which I think he has, mm. he, he deserves. I think he's he's he does he, he's, he does. He's, and I'm sorry to he, cut across you there, right? He does deserve yeah. the respect and. What winds me up about when I hear that, that, that um, oh, but the players love him, the players respect him. Well, they because they're not accountable. They, well, they're not going to be accountable, but they certainly don't put the performances in, do they? No. Yeah. For, to, for, no, for a manager different. that they respect so much. Yeah, but, and that's because, that's because they can remain comfortable, unaccountable, not feel the pressure exactly. of dealing with a new coach. Look at, I mean, I hate to bring him up again, but look at Cesc Fabregas, both his play today and his comments before the game. Um, he's been largely marginalized by uh, and by Conte this season, and not gotten the playing time he would have expected to. And instead of saying, you know, I want to play for you know for a team where I'm 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 a superstar and I get to play, he says I'm 100 percent staying next season, and I want to prove that to Conte that I can start in this team. Mm-hmm. And what did he do? He got a start today, and he was the man of the match. Yeah. And that you know, as, as, however I may feel about Cesc Fabregas, that is more of what I'd like to see some of the the Arsenal players say not not you know i'm going to tie my future to the team to whether the manager stays or goes because it seems that they respect and they like him because they don't have pressure of having to deal with somebody holding them accountable and so i agree with you 100 percent uh you know that if these things are true then if arson leaves then good riddance to the rest of them and and that would hurt for, that would hurt in Bell, in Bellerin's case because i really i mean he he is one of the two or three most irreplaceable players on this team but uh, him agitating and playing like he doesn't want to be there is not make him irreplaceable well, no. it, it makes sense for Ozil to stay if Arsene stays cuz who else is going to give him 5 weeks holiday during the season <laughs> <laughs> you know. I mean, he has he has more time off than the Queen, Marcel. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Seriously, Tom, any thoughts? I mean, several uh, <laughs> is, is the answer. But uh, no, I, I just don't think that football and sentimentality is around anymore. I mean, well, I completely agree with Craig and, and and his dad's theory about if if you don't want to play for the Arsenal, then then leave. But at this day and age of football, you just don't have the sentimentality anymore. It's just a case of they're here because they appreciate that Arsenal's a big club, but they're coming to play for a manager that's got a successful record of improving players, a successful record of of competing, not necessarily for the title, but up there as one of the bigger teams in the Premier League, and, and a manager who's gained a lot of respect among a lot of the players in Europe, and they've come in to do that's why you've got so much loyalty from the likes of Bellerin, from Urza they're the ones who say he brought me to the club and so I owe him a lot of a lot of respect but sentimentality doesn't come in I mean you just have to look I don't know if you were going to come on to it later on but look at Leicester I mean the respect that they those players have apparently shown Ranieri a guy who took an average team and turned them all into superstars in the space of a year uh, the respect that they've given back to him if it is true that they've uh, they spoke that the owners spoke to them and what I found funny about that situation is there was an interview with Casper Smythe Michael, um, with Jess Rees of Sky Sports and Jess Rees continuously asked Casper Smichael can you categorically tell me that there was no contact between you and the owners and every time he said I'm extremely insulted that uh, there's these stories going he around <laughs> yeah he didn't deny it he was like I'm, I'm extremely insulted that these stories going around that think that we as players have any influence and Jess Rees asked him again but can you categorically tell me that there was no contact between you and the owners about the topic and he said the same answer four times and he ended off by saying I don't know how many times I need to explain it all you needed to say Casper was no <laughs> <laughs> there was no contact. That's all you had to say if you didn't want there to be any any animosity about it. But he two, didn't. Two animosity. words: fake news. And fake and news. Uh, two, yeah. and and uh, yeah, we will be talking about the Leicester situation in a little bit because that's certainly one of the bigger stories of the week. Ah uh, man. Uh, speaking of which, Santi. Andy? Yeah, Santi's out for the season. Uh, I'm not surprised, but but I, I just wonder if. <sighs> Should we really have banked on Santi staying healthy all season? It's so similar to seasons in the past where we don't have the mentality of replacement. And I know that we're central midfield 
heavy at the beginning of the season, but it just, again, highlights why did we send Jack out knowing that we've got injury-ridden midfielders. So anyone else have any thoughts on should we have let Jack go knowing how Santee's been the last couple seasons? Or I'll go to Tom first on this one. I mean, uh, just just firstly, I mean, Jack's another example of um, a, a player who you'd think a couple of years ago, this guy's going to be at Arsenal forever. And his recent comments about, oh, I'm not so sure if I'll stay or not. But I mean, that that's for another podcast. But yeah, I, I don't think pe- people said we were midfield heavy before the season started. But I look at it and think, were we? Obviously, we sent Jack out. And when he was going to go away, a very crucial point of the season to the Africa Cup of Nations in which they got to the final, unfortunately, couldn't win it. But that's a significant amount of time that he was out. It meant that after we bring in a 34, uh, 34 million pound midfielder, who, by the way, cost more than N'Golo Kante. Oh, they're driving yeah. crazy. Um, a player who's known for getting sent off a lot and has already been sent off several times this season, not just for us, for the national team in Switzerland as well. And he was always going to miss games this season. I knew that from, from people who watched the Bundesliga religiously. And yet we felt... And Ramsey, who's a very injury-prone player, and Santi, who's received injuries in the past. Uh, I remember the one he got against Norwich a couple of seasons ago. Were we really midfield heavy? Because I don't think we were, and I think we had a very risky midfield that we could have bolstered more, and we chose not to, and instead we we, we kept that loyalty, which we always do with our players, uh, and it's a case that Xhaka, for one, is not a defensive midfielder. I don't care what anyone says. He's not a defensive midfielder. He's a deep-lying player who can play in a deeper role in that position, but he isn't an out-and-out player. He just hasn't got the tackling abilities to be that player. Um but we, we just didn't commit to buying a player that we could have. And it's probably one of the main reasons why we've lost these silly games this season, which we really should have won. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm on record, unfortunately. The, the good news is no one was listening to us uh, in our third podcast, which was the, the transfer deadline day special. But uh, I, I went on record as saying I thought that the, the loan move for Jack was probably uh, a reasonable move. I, I feel differently now. Uh, I'm not ashamed to admit um, because, yeah, I hadn't really taken into consideration that eight Eight injury-prone midfielders or, or, or suspension-prone midfielders are probably not the same as eight midfielders. Uh, it's probably closer to three or four. And, and um, anyone who thought after the first recovery period for Santi when they first extended his, his absence that we'd see him again on the pitch this season or maybe any season was just, I mean, ridiculously fooling themselves. I mean, that this was always going to be a full season injury from the moment he came off the sideline and had the ice on his, on his, uh, on his ankle, on his Achilles. It, it just feels like the Rosicki injury all over again. And, you know, the, the question like you've asked is why did we not reinforce and we better this summer? I mean, if they're expecting him to come back in August from this second injury and put in more than 10 or 15 games next season, I, I, I can't help you. Um, and we re-signed him to a new contract extension at 90000 a week, uh, of which he may end up not being able to even play. I, I love Santi Cazorla, but we can't keep paying 90000 a week for guys to do rehab for the rest of their career. Yeah. And that's what we've done here. Absolutely. I, 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 I have a different, I have different thoughts about Jack Wilshire being sent out on loan. Um, I've said it on Twitter, and I've, I've said it on a couple of occasions as well. I don't think that Jack Wilshere. I don't think that Jack Wilshere will leave Arsenal. Um, I think Jack Wilshere will be back at the Emirates next year. I hope Jack Wilshere is back at the Emirates yeah, next year. Um, but I think sending him on loan to Bournemouth could be one of Arsene Wenger's greatest pieces of management ever. Um, simply because Jack is getting the game time. You know, you are watching play for Bournemouth. It's the Jack Wilshere that we, you know, that we all know. Uh, that we'll, he's playing. He's playing undoubtedly some of the best football I think at Bournemouth um, that he's played. If we can get a rejuvenised, fit Jack Wilshere back um, next season, I don't think. I don't think. Me personally, I don't know how anyone else feels. I don't think we'll see Santi Corzola in an Arsenal shirt again. Um, 
makes me sad to say it, uh, but I, I don't think I don't think Santi will I don't think Santi will play for us again. Um, that, that, that's just my personal my personal. And, and I feel the same way, which makes it all the more curious that they they extended him before they needed to. Uh, I mean, they, they they needed to extend him on a guaranteed basis at that point. Had they not, he would have been a free agent at the end of the season, but he would have been an injured free agent at the end of the season, and you probably uh, could have made a deal with him to come back for a lot less than 90000 Absolutely. You know, I, I, that was a curious move. I've been talked into the Murdersacker move being okay based on his, his leadership and his off the field, and I'm not saying Cazorla isn't, uh, you know, isn't inspirational off the field, but not in the same way. Oh, he's a massive purpose. player. Well, and we yeah. miss him so much. We miss him so. He's such a naturally gifted footballer. Um, he's just so good, and you know, heartbreaking that he's been out for the season. Um, not just for us as fans, but for him as well. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> I shouldn't think Sandy does. I was very happy. Have, you know? what, what could have been the last two seasons if he had gotten her? But do you Absolutely. do you guys think that part of Arson's biggest issue is is holding such sentimentality to these players and with Santi likely to recover for next season do we feel like he wouldn't bring in the necessary replacement because he's going to say well Santi this it won't happen again even though we all know it will well that's his MO hasn't that just been an underlying issue as to why we haven't brought in these you know, I, I, we, we said it last week on the pod. Verratti, for example, nine million pounds PSG got him for. He was on our radar. We didn't bring yeah. him in because we had the likes of Ramsey coming through. But again, him and Santi, they're just so injury prone. Is that just a change that we're going to see when a new manager comes in, or do you think? Do you really, truly believe Santi won't ever play for us again? I don't. I, my personal belief is that I, I don't think Santi Cazola will play for Arsenal again. Um, I'm nearly going to start crying. But uh, yeah. I think that Jack Wilshere will come back re- rejuvenated um, and, and 100% fit. And Jack Wilshere has got set- Jack Wilshere has got scores to settle. Um, he does. At this club. And I would be very surprised, very surprised if if I know Jack Wilshere, you know, from, from what I've heard and, and what we've seen, if he doesn't come back to settle them, I shall be very, very surprised indeed. Well, I, I feel... Well, Let's we, hope he has an ankle transplant, though, between between the time he left and when he comes back. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's so. staying healthy now. I, 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 I think Tom had mentioned it earlier with players who don't see the value of staying at a club, I believe. And I think Jack is one of those players that truly loves Arsenal. And I remember back when he was being linked to City, and he made that comment of, why would I go to City when I love the Arsenal and I want to break yeah. the, the record uh, O'Leary has? Um, I want to be known as Mr. Arsenal. And so I, I hope that he does return. There's a reason we're not giving away the number 10 shirt. I, I really do hope he returns and he does settle some of those scores. But um, what would you guys say if he if he does return and gets injured immediately? I mean, what kind of fucking luck is that for us? I have three words. I have, I have three words. Same old Arsenal. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I, in fact, Plug. I'm thinking of starting, yeah. Oh, yeah. Thanks starting for a, a podcast yeah, thanks. called that. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for that. But, um, yeah, so oh, final... It's just so nice to have a Guna talk with you guys. <laughs> 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 with, oh. with, with just a couple of gooners in the you USA <laughs> yeah, that's it. you don't normally get to do that um, news this is the last piece of Arsenal news uh, to discuss uh, and I've, first of all I've got to give uh, credit and, and props to, to Ars blog for an incredibly funny article, uh, blog article that he did this week about this. I mean, I, I, it had me rolling on the ground um, so this isn't to copy it but just to, to you know tip my cap at it, and, and because this is in and of itself a pretty funny piece of news that I picked up on as well. News broke this week of the full transcript of the bust-up between Arsene Wenger and Anthony Taylor back from the Burnley game that caused him to be suspended for four games. <laughs> Wenger is accused of having said two different insults to Anthony Taylor. Two or three, depending on how you look at it. The first one was just unbelievably vulgar. He said, uh, you are dishonest to your federation. <laughs> Which just, I mean, the article that ours, the, the, the blog article just puts that quote into a number of different instances in life where you would tell someone that they're dishonest to your federation. I mean, 
And then being warned that this was an inappropriate statement, he went with the more standard fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> and then a minute later added again, fuck off. So <laughs> first of all, I mean, oh, this, thank you. this is, you know, you got to love Wenger's mouth a little bit here. I mean, every time you think that he, that he's just a, a pushover and a, and, and he's not, you know, he's not young anymore. He's not vital. Uh, you know, has no vim and vigor anymore. Uh, all of a sudden he busts this out. So um, you don't get that kind of thing in American sports. I mean, imagine if Bill Belichick, coach of the Patriots, is steaming on the sideline after a bad call, which is easy to imagine, and he just screams out to the referee, you are dishonest to your federation. <laughs> I mean, fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> no, the fuck off part, yeah. I mean, he, he could definitely do that. But there's nothing, there's just nothing like a dignified person, you know, dignified people of different countries and nationalities getting bent out of shape and screaming things like that at people. Do you give any props to Wenger for this? It's it's definitely the most flexible and impulsive he's been all season on anything. Uh, maybe it's a good good sign of things to come. But uh, now that you know the full story that led up to him protecting his private space and shoving him as well, mm. uh, any more respect for the man? <laughs> I, mean, I mean, it's it's just a funny story. I mean, I hope, I really hope that's that's all the guy has in his locker. That is the only <laughs> insult that he can ever put out to anyone. Like you know, the little bust up Mourinho on the touchline. I hope he said, it, "You are a disgrace to your federation, Mourinho." <laughs> <laughs> as, as he's pushing people, like I said in the podcast a month or so ago, he loves to fucking shove people, and I love that about him. I mean, it's probably my favorite thing about <laughs> Arsene Wenger right now. <laughs> can you imagine him in a club on a like a night out, just like <laughs> the one just pushing people away when someone bumps into him on the dance floor. Get you away. Imagine him in doing a celebrity <laughs> boxing match and the other guy's throwing punches at him and he's just shoving the guy away over and over yeah, again. Put Floyd Mayweather to shame. <laughs> Zach, well, that's all Floyd Mayweather does is just shove people around and stay out of their reach. But that's that's a story for another day. But yeah, I mean, that this is the greatest thing I've ever heard, um, in, at least in the last four days it's nice to know that he has the passion because i i often wonder when our team goes in for the halftime talk does he ever walk in and just kick over shit or throw a table i just i have always wondered or does he always go in with that same just like it's gonna be okay we'll get this that's what i'm saying we've been wondering with some of the starts to games that this club has had against watford against bournemouth i mean like what is he telling these players to get them motivated and excited about the game if he would just do this before the games, I don't think you would see any of that. Does he ever walk in and to just all the players just yell, you are all a d- dishonest to your federation? <laughs> yeah, to which they all turn around and go, oh, fuck off. Fuck off. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, think I, I, I look at it at a different angle. I think it was because he was pissed off because he knew he was going to get more abuse um, for drawing 1-1 one, one with Burnley. Yeah. Uh, but then, of course... <laughs> We've gone up the other end, and Kishoni's had his face kicked off. Yeah, whatever, um, whatever, whatever he uh, said worked. I've got another penalty, and we've won the game. But um, <laughs> I, I don't know. People say, "Oh, don't it? his passion's great, isn't it? His passion's great." Now, he doesn't show any. He rarely shows any passion on the sideline. He rarely gets up off his seat. Um, the passion is towards is towards the referees. It's not towards the game or the players. Absolutely, it's, it's, yeah. He, he, you know, he, he likes to have a guy a referee. Um, and and going back or, to or a water bottle or a water bottle. But going back to um, what was said about um, going into the changing rooms. What does he say at the changing rooms? Now, it's quite known. It's quite well known that Pat Rice had actually said to someone. That Pat, uh, Pat Rice, when he was assistant manager, would be in the, would would be in the dressing room, giving him you know giving him hell the players, uh, and Wenger would walk in behind him and tell him to stop shouting at the players. Oh, really? Um, are you can't good, have, cop, it, it, good cop, bad cop. Yeah, you, you can't have that no. because I don't think Arsene Wenger does discipline his players. I don't think Arsene Wenger does. Um, does he get passionate with him? I don't think so because it doesn't come. It doesn't come across in any of the performances that he has. Agree. No, no. That's what. I, that, that's why this was so surprising to me. Yeah. In uniform news. Yeah. So, did you boys see the kit releases, the leaked images from Footy? Puma out. 
Puma out. Hashtag Puma out. They're yeah. horrible. Yeah. Well, I don't. Yeah, they oh. are. I, the black and pink. I look at it and I'm like, it's different. We've never seen that before. But they're just bland mm. and boring. There's a lot of ex- there's a, a lot of excitement from our female community uh, uh, about that third kit. Yeah, but, uh, well, I like pink. <laughs> well, it's real different. Men, real- Real that's men for a different pink. show, Tom. That's for a different show. <laughs> that's Real on our. That's pink. on our. That's on our other show, Pink Fashion and, and You. Podcast is on Wednesdays. We do eighty nine. I podcasts. want us to go back to Adidas. I want us to go back to Adidas. Did you see? Yeah. There was a. There was a fan who uh, created some uh, Adidas kits that's been circulating around. Well, Andrew, um, Andrew, Andrew. Yeah, Adidas. Adidas. Yeah, I was going to point out the difference in Sorry, and, been, Andrew's been American for three I've, weeks. So I've he been has away to from be, England too long. But so we you, call it Adidas. <laughs> Adidas, yeah. Adi- Nike. 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 Uh, but have you guys seen those kits that have been floating around? Yeah, they're very Fucking nice. Fucking brilliant. I mean, they are absolutely uh, unbelievable. And if Puma just turned around and said, hey, those are great. Can we buy those from you or give you lifelong <laughs> kits or whatever? I mean, th- they, those are just um, unreal. We'll post some of those pictures. Mike, get on that. Post those pictures. I'll yeah, I'll do that. Stop I'll do posting that right pictures away. of people in Starbucks. <laughs> Creep. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I forgot to get uh, signed releases from the people that I just tweeted out yeah. that were walking in. You know, the shirt, Kit Schmidt, I, I couldn't care less about these leaks, and, and the kit changes every year. I do love this year's third kit, I have to say, but beyond that, the more the kit keeps changing, the more I'm looking at kits that have JVC and O2 and Dreamcast on them instead and uh, no I'm, name on the back. <laughs> I'm staring in front of me, and in front of me, because behind me are my Arsenal shirts. So in front of me, I've got an Atletico Madrid shirt with Griezmann on the back. I've got a Fiorentina shirt with Borja Valera on the back, a nice purple kit. I mean, purple as a football kit is just a brilliant colour. And then next to that is an Espanyol kit of Marco Asensio on the back, and they're just beautiful kits. And it's just like, why can't Arsenal recreate something like these these kits? Because it's... Oh, it's just so bland and all why, the time. Why? When did it become a popular thing for us to just release three kits every fucking season? Just, to, to, yeah. just, just, it just uh, it used to be. It used to be two seasons, right? To yeah. fleece yeah. the fans, of course. Fleece the fans. I mean, we have fucking Walmart money. We don't need to do that. Exactly. <laughs> this is what I've always said, and this this goes back. This goes back to the stadium and atmosphere and all this, right? Arsenal do not want the supporters that go to the Emirates. That will go to the that will go to the Tottenham, or will go to the um, <coughs> oh, tavern guys name. pub. Forgot the name of the pub that I I go to anyway. The Eaglet, right? Have a beer. Go walk down the road. Go into the ground. Watch the game. Might have a beer at half time. Full time whistle goes. You're gone home. Arsenal want the fans that are going to come from. No disrespect, they're going to come yeah, yeah. from America, Absolutely. they're going to come from um, you know, different Asia. parts they're of gonna, the world. They're going to spend an hour in the armory gift They're going to go in the armory, mm-hmm. they're going to spend £300 in the armory before the game, they're going to go in the game, they're going to they're gonna, they're gonna want to get uh, the bottles of water with Arsenal written on it, they're keeping the bo- burger boxes because I've got an Arsenal badge on it, they then come out of the ground and they spend another £300 in the armory and, and, and they go away. They're the fans that Cronky... And Gazi just want at this club. And that is why the atmosphere is crap. Yeah. Because no disrespect, I've got no problem with anyone travelling halfway around the world to come and watch Arsenal. Of course. Great. Um, mm. Fair play to you. But that is the reason why the Emirates is like it is. Because it's not full of real Arsenal supporters. I'd like, to announce, I'd like to announce at this time that I'll be over at the Emirates, uh, <laughs> Manchester City and West Ham games. But uh, go, go back to stewards. I've always seen stewards tell people to sit down, but I've never seen a steward tell someone to put their selfie stick away or their iPad. Right? Never seen that happen. No, oh. That's why we've got three kids, lads, and it's simple as that. That's why we we've got three kids. We, we need more vlogs of the game, though, don't we? <laughs> but yeah, I, I, it'd be nice, to, and I get the commercial. I'm not side referring of it. to. I'm not referring to anyone in specific, of course. Of course not. It would be nice, though, if we went back to the days where you know your third kit was covering two seasons, or your home kit was. Because it's just, you're right, the commercial aspect is killing it. And if we could all go back probably now and, and change that question with the what would you do if you're cronky, I would fire Ivan in a heartbeat. Yeah. Absolutely in a heartbeat. And I'd bring in a Thierry Henry or an ex-player that has Arsenal in their heart and say, hey. Ian Brighton. 
Absolutely. Yeah. Someone who is just, just bleeds it and says, hey, help me run this shit. Because mm-hmm. every meeting we walk into, you're thinking the same way the 60,000 fans are thinking when they're walking into the Emirates. You know, and so... Well, why on? do we need a third kit anyway? I mean, when I was growing up, it was home and away. Yeah. What, what do we need a third kit? Why do we need a top? Oh, yeah, that's for the cups. What? Well, so so I read online when we were playing, was it Basel or Ludogorets that they didn't have uh, an alternate kit? And I was reading that that was one of the reasons the third kit was introduced was so we could, when we go away, if they don't have the necessary kit, we could wear that. But we didn't even fucking do that. We wore, an, or we wore our away <laughs> exactly. when we were playing at home. So it's just, it doesn't make sense. Yeah, it's, you know, it's, again, you know, you get, you'll get the clubs playing, you know, at the Emirates, the Emirates Cup, for example. Yeah. You know, they'll be playing a game in the third kit. It's not right. When yeah. I go to the Emirates to watch Arsenal, they wear, I, I want to see Arsenal in red and white. No, and if I, I if I agree. if I travel away to watch Arsenal, I want to see him in blue and blue and yellow. You know, it's just, I don't want to see no fur kits. Fur kits to me is just a complete money making thing. Um, if you ask me, yeah, mm. I agree. well, it worked on me this season because it was the only one that had the the size that I needed. Because <laughs> 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 um, I'm tired of uh, of putting on double XLs and having them fit me like it's you know like I'm wearing a bathing suit, like a morph suit. Exactly. Um, so, all right, so let's let's whip through some non-Arsenal uh, uh, Premier League news from this week. We have a, a, a trio of Wayne updates, starting with Wayne Rooney. Is he China bound, Everton bound, or MLS bound? Where do you think the best? He certainly doesn't seem to be United bound for next no. season. So, a what do you think? Surgeon. The, <laughs> yeah, exactly, <laughs> surgery bound. I guess if you could just uh, a quick one-word answer, which of those three do you envision him playing in next year? China. Uh, China. United. You think so? Tom, you said United? Yeah, I think he'll stay. I mean, every single time they've talked about him leaving, uh, whether he'll it's stay. the city or MLS, he ends up staying. Yeah, I think, I, I, I mean, I'm not a big fan of the guy, but I, I respect the fact that when he's not sleeping around with sex workers, he's he's probably a family bloke, and I, don't, I think his family are quite settled in Manchester. Um, so, yeah, I think he'll stay. Yeah, I, I would say I think he's. If he was smart, he would do MLS. <clears throat> Excuse me. I think he'd go MLS, probably New York, Ugh. LA, somewhere. <laughs> one of the one of the, one of the only three teams the big players go to. But at the end of the day, like you get paid, his like you say, he's a he won't get paid man. like he would get paid in China. No, but then you, no. he's not going to uproot his family to China. And then say on that, he's on 350 grand a week as it is. Yeah, yeah true. He can barely speak English. I'd like to see him speak in Mandarin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's not going to be able to pick up any women over there. Um, so, yeah. did we all answer where he was going? I think we did. I, did? I, I, think, he, I think he'll end up in China, actually. Um, Wayne Shaw, let's quickly talk about him as our second <laughs> Wayne. So we we had the honor of speaking to Wayne we what, three weeks ago. Um, I believe. Yeah. And, yeah, and, it was and we've brilliant. actually way – ba- Way back when, before he was famous. Yeah, and he even he's even agreed to come back on the pod, but he wants the dust to settle a little bit. But yeah. One of well, he's talking, I, he said he might – We all think we should get to settle. <laughs> Yeah. What I think is absolutely great of this story, and Mike, I know you've got some stuff to say, but I love how really that whole betting scandal gained a lot of notoriety from um, Piers Mor- Morgan. Is that his name? Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think you pronounced I got, it wrong. It's uh, Piers the Snakey Cunt. Oh, sorry. Did I, did I, did I, did I <laughs> there goes our chances of having him on the podcast. So, yeah. uh, no, but so he highlights the whole the whole gate thing, the pie gate, and then today he posted a picture saying it was atrocious and it shouldn't have ever happened. It's like you fucking helped create the problem. Yeah, there's a lot of problems he's created that he th- that, that turn out are pretty atrocious. This is uh, yeah, this was this was his his doing, but yeah. Th- when we taped our last pod, it was right after the Sutton game, and, and, and the gambling element, I mean, we were just laughing at the, 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 com, the pure comedy that it was, and the gambling element was just breaking, and we didn't realize how big of a deal it would be, that, you know, or that he would lose his job for the second time with Sutton because of it. But, um, you know, we had a feeling when we had him on the show a few weeks ago that he'd become well-known, but, I mean, literally everybody in the footballing world now knows about Wayne Shaw one way or the other. Uh, but uh, I love that guy. I don't care what anyone else says. I blame Sunbets. 
Uh, I mean, if you are going to publicize a bet like that, that depends on a voluntary decision from a human being and not a combination of events like a, like the score of a football game or, or even, you know, who scores the first goal. If you're going to bet on something that someone can manipulate one way or the other and you make it known, uh, I, I mean, Wayne Shaw could have decided to inform all of his mates that he wasn't going to eat the pie. And even though the odds wouldn't have been as good, they still would have made money off of that. And he still would have been under investigation for that. So, I mean, those kinds of bets are the problem. Wayne was in a no-win situation, and, you know, he, he, took, he took an opportunity to, you know, to make the most of something, uh, but he really, he, he would have lost either way, and that wasn't his, you know, that, that's Sunbet's fault in my mind. Absolutely. Couldn't have said it better myself. I apologize yeah, for saying the C word. No, you yeah, can well, say cunt all you want. Oh. <laughs> well, in well, fact, we're going to have a special segment at the end where you just say cunt for 10 minutes straight. Like when Mike and I started this podcast, I let him know. I said, hey, this, this, the cunt word's going to come out every once in a while. And you know what's funny? It's always a guest that says it, Mike. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> now i got well, my son walking around saying, what's a well, cunt? I will <laughs> add to the, um, the discussion on the Wayne Shore is just the fact that I think the FA did the right thing in investigating it because we need to talk about consistency with what the FA... If it happens, if a betting scandal happens, whether it's fifth tier or top tier, we moan about the refereeing situation not being consistent and the FA not being consistent with uh, punishing referees like I did with Mike Dean, obviously sending him down to the championship for, for which he then made another refereeing mistake in the game so, referee down there. So maybe Wayne Shaw can get a job with Burnley then like Joey Barton did. Exactly, that's <laughs> I, what I was just about to say. Joey Barton's just been, just been caught betting on over 200 football matches exactly. and he's still playing football. So oh, no, that's ridiculous. Where's the, you know, where's the line here? You know? And would you believe earlier today Sutton's keeper, Ross Wormer, was <laughs> injured in the 10th minute of the game and they uh, had no backup keeper. Uh, they won today against Torquay 3-2 to two, and they had to play their right back in goal for 80 minutes because they uh, had no backup keeper today. <laughs> So we would have we, we could have seen him, uh, you know, become a first teamer again. But that yeah, that that just crazy how that developed. And and we uh, we hope that Wayne will join us again in a few weeks because he, he couldn't couldn't meet a nicer, more genuine guy who just I think got sucked into you know a whirlwind that he didn't create. Yeah, absolutely. So um, and, and speaking before when we were talking about Wayne Rooney and sleeping around, Wayne Bridge, uh, victim or uh, was he just a? I mean, we, we don't. Oh, Jesus. Who, went to, be, young, who went to Mems' house? Is that someone's young family? <laughs> yeah, who went to Mems' house? Yeah, that's sorry, my apologies. You, that's my uh, little boy in the background crying. <laughs> yeah. Did he come out because we started talking about? He wants to go out of bed. I think he wants to go out of bed. Is he in the leaked football kits? <laughs> I, I, I thought, I, my, my daughter has just appeared as well. Do you want to say hello to the boys? No. Why not? It's our American debut. Yeah, do, they're in America. Do you want to speak to the boys in America? We no, promise all right. No, she doesn't want to speak to the boys in America. <laughs> we, prob- we promise not to use the c word in front of her. Okay, and then Wayne Gretzky is the third Wayne. I mean, just uh, have you seen how hot his daughter is? I mean, Mamma Mia! I just said that had to. Th- I-, I like to do things in three, and I just had to throw that in there. So, Google, Google it if you if you haven't what's seen it. What's her name? Sorry, what's that? Uh, I think it's Paulina, maybe. Um, but yeah, it, it's ridiculous. Um, oh yeah, best she picture- is hot. The best picture this I've ever seen, the funniest picture I've ever seen, and we've been accused of, as of about an hour or two ago of posting it on Twitter a little too often. But did you see the snapshot from the Facebook Live in the Sutton uh, locker or in the dressing room after the game when Ray Parlow was standing there having a beer with the team? Have, have you, Tom, Craig, have you heard <laughs> yeah, about this? Yeah. No, I didn't see that. No. <laughs> oh, my God. 3,000 people watching on a Facebook Live – and they're, one of their players, their French player, uh, whose last name is, is Gomis, but I don't think there's any relation to Bat the Femby, uh, oh, right. is just sitting there, dick out, absolutely no <laughs> clothes on in, in, yeah. in the picture, and 3,000, 4,000 people on Facebook Live watching it. And, of course, people took screenshots, and, and, and uh, Ray Parler is just standing there having a Budweiser, and <laughs> everyone else is sitting around, like, paying him respects and, 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 and letting her penis hang out. He gave away... <laughs> He gave away the dick shot for free. I mean, you never do that. No. You can never. You got to make people work for it. 
Yeah, and he's not paid a lot for the football in the first place. So oh, I'm sorry, but when has ever any man had to work before he gave away? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, as, as we're on about dick shots, actually, I got banned from Facebook for three days today. Why? Like I told you to uh, change your profile picture. Yeah. <laughs> because I posted, I posted what I thought was a funny picture um, of a man looking at his watch but you could see his willy. So I thought, well, I'll have a laugh with this now. And I put it up on Facebook. I said, can anyone tell me if this is a fake Rolex or a genuine Rolex? <laughs> um, and I someone woke up this morning. You. I couldn't get into my account. Yeah, that means someone reported you. Someone reported got, me. You got and, um, on your... Someone on this <laughs> yeah. podcast, I think, probably. Someone... I've been banned for three days. Someone oh, is, <laughs> someone's, yeah, someone's grassed you up. So does that mean Ray Parler's banned from Facebook as well, though? Well, that's so, what I want to know, because if he's not, I, I, I want to know why. Well, well we, it's coming for us all. Well, yeah. We eventually, yeah, when we eventually do the Facebook Live, uh, Andy, with our dicks out, I mean, you could be sure that we're going to be sponsored by a company that's going to be paying us a lot of money. We're not you know, giving it away for I think you've been dishonest to your federation, and that's why you've got the ban. <laughs> <laughs> Two and that, times. my friends, is called, is called a callback. <laughs> and Andy is the master of that. Uh, and... Um, by the way, Claudio Ranieri, um, I think this is our last, our last bit. We, we said we'd get to Claudio Ranieri. Um, as we ponder whether a manager of a top team that hasn't won a title in 13 years should keep his job, a yo-yo team that just won the title last year fired theirs after 25 uh. games. I think this is ridiculous, and, and it, it bugs me when people try to equate the two situations with Arsenal. Like, why are Arsenal fans so offended that he got mm-hmm. fired when they're trying to push out their their manager? I, I don't think those two situations are equal at all. Um, it's a tough one, though, because you know more than just the performance on the pitch, which has been dreadful, they're now officially in the bottom three until they play Liverpool on Monday. Uh, he's apparently totally lost the locker room with some of the decisions he's made. I mean, there are some articles that outline his, you know, his his rigid stature, his training sessions on the morning of an FA Cup match. Um, you know, and, and Mourinho getting called classy for wearing a shirt to his press conference with CR on it is ridiculous. Because, number one, he's not classy. Number two, no one should be shocked that he's supporting a manager whose players turned against him because it's happened to him like five or six times. Mm. And, and as it turns out, the CR was actually for Cristiano Ronaldo. It was a plea to have him come back. But, <laughs> so it wasn't even being classy anyway. But uh, I, I mean, I, I think I can kind of guess. But uh, Andy, what, I mean, do, what do you think about this decision from Leicester? I hate to say it, but football's a business. Is it shambolic? Uh, no. <laughs> It's a business, and there's 200 million pounds in the balance for them to stay in the league. But I, I, but in the same breath, I wonder how much the owners make off of Ranieri last season when they won the league. So it's just like, for me, there's no loyalty anymore. And I think we talked about it a couple of weeks ago on the podcast. That do we really want Arsenal to turn into a team where we revolve managers every two seasons? No. This, to me, is absurd. I mean, what he's done... They should have given him the rest of the season. Whether or not they go down, um, it's it can't be his fault. Now, if he did lose the locker room, that's tough, right, to get the players to rebound. But what are they going to do now? I mean, the team is in, aren't that good. Is Mancini really going to save them if he comes in? You know, I, I, hear, just, I hear Goose Hitting, cause the, uh, who has just made, made an absolute career out of just coming in in the second half of the season and finishing the season off for teams. Yeah, yeah. It's absurd. Like He's linked with – I mean, any manager gets fired, he's linked. Um, what yeah. they're going to do is they're going to come out and beat Liverpool on Monday probably. But, probably. Uh, but yeah, I mean, yeah. your thoughts, Tom? Oh, I just I, I genuinely couldn't fathom the decision personally. Uh, I, I take on board the point that Leicester are in free fall and and they're up for relegation, which usually sparks a lot of teams uh, into changing manager. We, we've seen loads of teams change their manager and still go down. Um, I mean, you look at Crystal Palace who have changed their manager to Sam Ardice, It's not working. Mm-hmm. Um, they're still down there fighting for their lives and I just think that this is what Leicester are this is where we should expect to see Leicester battling for their place in the Premier League it was just last season was such an incredible achievement and such a, a historic moment and probably the greatest achievement in football that was, that's ever happened if you look at it compared to everything I'd, I'd, I'd challenge anyone to come up with something else and no, no without a question 
Wayne Rooney's hair transplant success is not one of them. Um, <laughs> to bring that up for a second time, this podcast. Um, <laughs> your Dig, the there. <laughs> Dig the bell. Dig the bell. No, no. See, you're not under, I'm I sorry don't know what the bell is about, but dig he it. He doesn't understand. I have made it clear. The bell is when you say something that you would only hear in football or British colloquialism, like sixes and sevens. It doesn't just, it doesn't just ring itself when something smart is said, uh, Andy. So, well. You, you, Maybe by podcast 50, you'll understand what the bell is for and why I brought a fucking bell in the car sitting outside of a Starbucks. <laughs> Tom, if you say it again, if you say it again, I'll do the fart app in the background. That'll there be. We <laughs> and then, and then we just officially turn into a circus. But I mean, uh, we, sorry, we didn't mean to, we didn't mean to interject there. I don't know. It's fine. I, mean, I remember shows of Craig. A little podcast business we had to take care of there. <laughs> I remember when shows of Craig, when people would master the Google effects app on Hangouts. <laughs> 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 And it would would just spark into wah, just, wah, wah, wah. yeah right. stuff like that. But um, no, I mean I, I can't understand it. I just think this is where Leicester should be. They are a team that should be fighting for their place in the Premier League. And Ranieri, if they went down, which is as as Andrew says, they they've made a lot of money already. They have. I, I, I had a comical conversation on Twitter with someone last night when I put out the tweet. I was replying to, to DT about it, who, who who sits on the other side of the fence for it, with an opinion I completely respect. Um, and the guy said to me, oh, their, their, their owner isn't even that wealthy anyway. So I had a quick look on Google, and he's only worth $3.3 billion. Um, so, yeah, at so, that point, uh, what's a billion here, a billion there? Really gonna to, which, to, yeah, to which his response was, oh, compared to the others, that's not that wealthy. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> Your life must be great. <laughs> but, uh, uh, in in no, comparison, I'm... Stan is worth $7.5 billion. Yeah, so And that's not the... including his wife's money. No, and Abramovich is 9.1, I believe, because I checked. So a third of Abramovich. So Leicester are a third of a team that Chelsea are. I mean, at the moment, Arsenal are about a fifth of that. So when you look at when you, when you look at the comparison, they must be doing all right. I just I can't understand it. I, I think that if they went down, he's a good manager to, to be able to rebuild, chuck out the players like Vardy and that who don't really want to play for him and, and build a team that do want to play for the man. And it's just it's just a crying shame. And I never really agree with Gary Lineker, but I thought he spoke very eloquently. And, and excellently on when he was interviewed the other day, actually. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you've got two or three players on that team who are probably thinking, I should have left, I made a mistake, and how are they going to get performances out of those guys when they're, mm-hmm. when they're thinking that at this point? And I'm just glad that Vardy didn't leave. Mm. <laughs> Who'd want to manage, who yeah. would want to manage players who are going to go behind your back? I just... Uh, Absolutely. Well. Craig, what do you think? What are your thoughts? I'm very much like yours, Andy, really. Um, football's a results business. His results are bad. Um, you know, no one, I don't think no one could fathom to see Leicester uh, in the relegation zone now. Um, I know one me, person course. that did. Yeah, we, <laughs> our, our first ever podcast, we had a... We had a who do we think will survive, who do we think will get relegated, and our friend George called Leicester being relegated this season. I have backed it at 35 to 1. But so you did, to, from the I, beginning. I, yeah. It's worth I it. I went to, to put on it, though. But um, I backed it at 35 to 1. That's just the way football goes, isn't it? So, um, but, but back to Ranieri, it's a, it's a results business. The results are poor. Again, if he's lost the dressing room, if the players are going behind his back, you know, then... I would have thought Ranieri would would want to be gone from there anyway, um, to be honest with you. But the sacking comes at a strange time, uh, a very strange time. Oh, like I said, I think they should have just seen the season out with him um, and gone from there. So, yeah, I, I feel sorry for him in a way. They clearly uh, felt like they were doomed with him, and they at least have a chance not to be without him. Well, uh, Tom, I, I, don't know, I don't know. Craig's right. It did come at a weird time because – you you leave Sevilla two one down. That's not a that's not a fixture yeah, in the middle of, of a, in the middle of a Champions League right. And so final my, sixteen tie is so a very odd time. I, I think the ownership thought we're going to go to Sevilla and get bashed, and so when we come back, that's going to be the best time for us to to make this happen. But do Leicester now focus on bringing in a manager that can bring him back up, or are they going to focus on bringing in a manager that's going to keep him in the league? Because I think it'll be a manager to bring them back up. Yeah, um, I think I think they're going to go down. 
So it just I just begs the question: if you if you think you're going to go down anyway, or at least we do, why not just keep Ranieri in, and then in the summer let him go and bring in a manager to do just that? You know, it's just mm-hmm. it's such a weird situation. Who would you guys replace him with if you had the if you had the option of saying this is who I think the best manager for Leicester is? Oh. Who's, who's going to be the first one to say Wenger? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm saying Wade Shaw. Me, I'm saying Wade Shaw. Yeah. He's yeah. out of work. Uh, He's yeah. available. Sure, yeah. Could be a good one. Um, oh, God, there's so many managers. You know, this. Is, are you talking about free actions? Are you talking about, you know. Not Alan Pardew. <laughs> I think that's the obvious answer. Yeah, not Alan not Pardew. Yeah, I mean, perhaps a, perhaps a Benitez. Mike, you know, oh, yeah. a, a Rafa Benitez. He's, he's, doing, he's doing great things at Newcastle. They look like they're going to come up. Um, Chris Hewton uh, looks uh, I mean, good as well. Chris Hewton, yeah. Um, yeah it's a it's lot like of the, re- the revolving door of, of I mean, there's, there's, it, the same thing happens in, in American sports. There's yeah. the same the same retread uh, coaches and managers, but I mean, it's just amazing how you know it's, you instantly look at the same four or five people every single time, as long I, as they're not already employed. I'll tell you what's funny about that though is that I remember watching Soccer Saturday when um, was it Hull employed Marco Silva as their manager, um, the Portuguese guy who formerly took Olympiacos to the title, and they were going, "Why haven't Hull given an English manager a chance? Why have they not given another English manager a chance? Why are they bringing in this guy?" They were going, "I could win the league with Olympiacos." And is it just me or the whole at ten times better at the moment under this uh-huh. new manager? There was yeah. it they 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 beat um they beat United, I think or beat Liverpool, sorry. Um and they drew against United and they, they took Chelsea right to the edge and should have got something out of that if the penalty had been given for them. They've looked so much better under this new manager, and yet it's always about this English patriotism that we've got to show that just <laughs> just means absolutely when are we gonna get in mind? An English manager has never won the Premier League <laughs> let's yeah. just get that in there when, when has there ever been a successful English manager there hasn't that's why the, the, the best time we saw under England was with an Italian manager Fabio Capello since then it's been awful yeah. <laughs> it wasn't even great under Capello but it's even even worse now so oh. Oh, what a mess what a mess we got a few <laughs> listener questions to whip through um Abhishek Kotnis from Virginia I, uh, this is someone I know I've, I've watched games with uh he has Two questions. The first one we've kind of already uh, answered. Should we start looking at a replacement for Santi this summer or focus on retaining Alexis and or Ozil? Um, I, I think pretty obviously we need to do uh, both <laughs> of those things, don't you think? Uh, find a replacement for Santi if, if Jack is uh, is not coming back uh, and uh, and retain Alexis and or Ozil. Andy? Yeah, I yeah. All the above. I guess, I mean, I guess he's saying if you could only do one of those things, well, then it's, should we devote more energy towards a replacement for Santi or re-signing? It's retaining, it's retaining Ozil and Sanchez, who I think is already gone, um, unfortunately. Unless Venga does leave and we bring in that Chilean manager. Um, yeah. But no, I, I think if we, if we bring Jack back and uh, that's Santi's replacement, Right, and if Santi stays healthy, great. Mm. Fights for a first team. If uh, if we can re-sign one of the two, great. But uh, man, it's going to be a real shit summer if both of them leave and Arson does walk. Oh, it's going to be a complete reset. Yeah, complete Tom, reset. What do you think? I mean, I, I, I can't. But at the moment, I just I can't remember the last time Arsenal went through the phase of losing one of their their main guys. It was uh, Sami Nasri, like the yeah, last one. Or Robin Van Persie is, yeah, well, is the last one that I can remember. And it's been well, so Van Persie long. came after Nasri, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, he did. Um, and I just, it's just, it seems so out of character now for us to be in a situation where we're trying to hang on to one of our big players, especially considering now that we're supposed to be in this phase of post uh, financial difficulties and that we can pay the likes of the money that other, other Premier League teams can, but apparently not. Uh, but to lose, lose Alexis will be absolutely devastating. I don't think in this day and age, because there's a real lack of actual quality out there of, of established players. There's a lot of potential out there at the moment. Uh, just an example was we saw with Monaco the other night they've got a brilliant team of, of young players going around but in terms of actual 
well, like good players that are set and ready to, to, to come in and, and play straight away. There isn't really anyone besides people that are already at the top, top clubs. Mm-hmm. So it's going to cost top dollar. It's, if they want to take Alexis, it will take at least 60, if more, 70 million to buy him. Uh, unless he, they choose to let his contract run down, which I think would be stupid if you're going to get that amount of money for him. Yeah. But it's, it's 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 worrying. It's really worrying to see what happens. And if it it's all if it hangs on the hinges of Wenger staying or going, I I don't I just don't know what to think of it. Really, it's just yeah. it, this, uh, it, it's been this way for a number of years in a row. But this summer is really going to be. You know, fingernail biting time for for Arsenal supporters. There's just so many different pieces that are all in play, and it's it's going to be a nervous time. And of course, everything will get resolved in August, yeah, <laughs> instead of June or July when it should be after the third fixture of the next season. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Con- yeah. And his second question. Spe- speaking of RVP, his second question: controversial, hypothetical, one word answer. You're managing Arsenal. If RVP was 30 again, would you bring him back if available on a free transfer? Oh, no. Stop. No, sorry. No, I wouldn't. No. no. I can't do it. It's just blasphemous. <laughs> it's just, it's you know, just, you know what, though? If he had left Arsenal to go to, to go to United and won the trophy and then fucked off into the sunset to Turkey, I would have been okay with that. But he trolled. Arsenal supporters after he'd won that with the picture that he put online. So fuck him. He's done. You know, I yeah. welcome Sesk back because he was a former captain. He left to go to a club that he grew up with. Like, I get that whole situation. I don't think he's ever come out and done anything where he's, no. you know, trolled the Arsenal supporters or said anything negative. Van Persie's done all that, so he can go fuck himself. And, yeah, he's what? The, the only thing I can think of with Sesk is that he once, there's a quote of him saying, if you ever see me in a, a, a shirt in blue, kill me. He said that when he was at Arsenal, which is an ironic point that a lot of people brought up when he moved. Yeah. But I would have, but the only reason we didn't get Sesk is basically because Wenger said we, we didn't have room for him. Right. Um, which and... looks very naive now. <laughs> totally. Totally. Yeah. Yeah, I think we've lost Craig, as a matter of fact, actually, yeah, so if we haven't, heard, Craig, we haven't heard him pipe up in a little while. Craig had to go and take care of his kids, so he um, he thanked us for being on, and, and then he fucked off. So oh. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow Sorry. I missed that. Um, the... Uh, but he was a oh, and my, my answer about RVP is, is absolutely not. No, the only way I bring RVP back is to play in the tossermonial. Uh, Tom, have you heard about the tossermonial? It's, a, it's the biggest fed. The tossermonial, uh, just going to be 11 of the most assholic ex-Arsenal players on the pitch right. at the same time, just having people throw shit at them for 90 minutes. And, um, and, and he would be leading the line uh, for that, for sure. Um, <laughs> question from Bobby. Bobby Chakravati, uh, great with the questions, at Bob Lex. Can we learn to defend since we've got a week and a bit off? <laughs> I think the answer, is, the answer is probably not. No. And what does Ash- Boldy do? <laughs> like, what um, is his? What, what does he do at our club? <laughs> shaves his head. That's all. I'm actually staring at somebody right now at, who's in the Starbucks who looks exactly like Steve Bold. Um, That's unfortunate. Yeah, oh, I want to get a picture. Um, so stop taking pictures of people. <laughs> I actually know the guy, too. He used to coach my son. Anyway, uh, Has anyone walked up. out yet and just taps on your window and says, excuse me, sir, but why aren't you wearing any pants? <laughs> well, they can't see that because I've got the laptop over my, over my junk. <laughs> so, uh, at Shut Up Piers asks, or Chance, <laughs> what a hand. <laughs> he's one of our own goal. He's one of our own goal. Harry Kane, he's one of our own goal. He sure is. And then asks, if Pot, is Potch a fraud in the U.K.? Ooh, that's a good what question. Do you think? Yeah, is, I mean, is he? Uh, have we crowned him as the uh, the next Alex Ferguson a little too soon, or whatever whatever we've crowned him as? I didn't. <laughs> so, I mean, oh, I, I, <laughs> personally, I never backed the guy. Um, I thought he did great things at Espanol. Uh, he came in and did a great job at Southampton, but he still hasn't done it at Spurs and he, he, he's probably done the most Spursy thing that any manager at Spurs has ever done with what happened with the last season uh, I mean that was an incredible capitulation I mean I know I've used quite a lot of big words tonight it's confusing even it me but, uh, <laughs> um, 
But no, it, it, they capitulated so much last season towards the end with that Newcastle game in particular. And he, has, he hasn't won a trophy yet. He hasn't won anything. And I don't get the hype around him whatsoever at the moment. He's He's got a very good striker, and I hate to admit that. And I hate to... A lot of Arsenal fans won't admit it very stubbornly, but Harry Kane is a good striker. Mm-hmm. He, seems to, uh, he seems to get the most out of a, a lesser squad, which I think is mm. why people are... Are, are fascinated with him is he, he really has up until the times where it mattered the most last season he, do, he does seem to get a little uh, you know the most out of what he's got um, he's a true that, he's a true out and out striker I, I mean he'll put the ball in the back of the net from wherever he is on the pitch and that's what you want he's he's very similar to Henri where he will create or move his body into a position that puts him into a scoring chance I think the reason why we all hate him was because he is an Arsenal supporter he loves to bang in goals against us and he's playing for Spurs if, I think if he was at another club we wouldn't give a mm. shit as much but he is probably one of the better strikers in the world right now, and he's not on a great team. I mean, imagine putting him on a Barcelona or a fucking Real Madrid. I mean, he'd be 40-plus a season. I mean, and and that's likely the route he's going to go when they have to build the new stadium. They're going to have to sell one of the one of the top players. But um, I, I, I would take Harry Kane in a heartbeat. Yeah. In a heartbeat. Yeah. I take him and then I punch him in that stupid mouth of his. But. Well, so to answer your question on, on Poch, is he a fraud? I think he's a good manager, but not in England. I think his style mm. is more suited to the likes of Spain or Italy. How great would this scenario be, boys? Arson retires. We go out and get Diego Simeone, and then Atletico turn around and then fucking hire Pochettino to replace <laughs> Simeone. Full circle. I'd rather have that that situation end with or have uh, uh, Sam Poli, I think, in the if I'm saying that correctly, um, Sam Pauli. Yeah. Sam Pauli. Sam Pauli. <laughs> yeah, that, <laughs> that, that was authentic. That? That's a perfect accent from an English American that uh, is is speaking with a Chilean accent. So, um, picks. And I have to say, we've had three games so far in match day 26, and um, and I've got four points today. So. Ooh. Watch out, boys. I'm coming to get you. Uh, five, Mike, the scores says, right- Mike says that a lot, specifically on Thursday nights. Yeah. Well. <laughs> dressed, dressed in leather, ready yeah. to go. Well, that, that's when I do my uh, coming to get you and you pod. <laughs> but uh, So, Andy, you're still holding on to, to, to the pole position at 63. Guest spot at 60, but I am uh, c- coming up from the rear, I was going to say, <laughs> but that's going to be... That's going to be parsed and talked about uh, at 58 <laughs> as of today. So um, we got our picks, and Tom, you get to do all of them since Craig has a family that that he cares about more than us. Well, uh, I'm alone and lonely. Nice. Uh, <laughs> that's how we're all going to end up. Um, <laughs> Bournemouth at Man United. Um, I, I actually am required on, contractually go to go first because Andy doesn't want me drafting off of any uh, anyone else's picks to try to pick something uh, different. So I'll go, I'll Tom, go do you not do you not think it's fair? Right. So the up until Christmas, I pick first, and then I, I and I mm. said at the Christmas period, Mike. Now we're at reverse fixtures. You should start picking first because ultimately, I could just pick all the same scores as him and win the league. Yeah. So is that not uh, fair to just reverse the order in which we pick? Andy, you are dishonest to your federation. <laughs> <laughs> All right, born with it, man. United. You've got the next pick, Mike. You've yeah, got the next. Off. Well, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm going to tell, tell, tell him that twice after we're done. <laughs> Three one United, uh, Bournemouth led by the great Eddie Howe has not won a fucking game in 2017 yet, um, and I believe that includes today. Um, they're not going to start at the Theater of Dreams either, which is such a stupid nickname for a, for a stadium. Brace from Ibra, one from Mata, and it's 3-1 United. Andy. Oh, that's interesting. 3-1 United. I'm going to go, I'm gonna go one, one nil United. Defensive masterpiece. Okay. Let's predict all the scorers for every goal. No, you, 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 uh, it's and how they're scored. No, it's, it's optional. <laughs> On what minute? <laughs> although, although when Andy provides detail, it's usually involving players scoring with and breaking their penises. Yeah. With uh, oh. so um, you, you can provide as little or as much hey, detail. Hey, Tom, we like to keep this pod classy. Yeah, I mean. The word penis has been mentioned a, a staggering amount of times on this show. Today. <laughs> yeah. 
Andy just like chokes on the number of times we talked about the number of penises Hey-o. we talked about. All right, Tom, what do you think? Uh, I'm going to go with uh, two, two. Okay. Excellent. That's another point I can pick up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hull at Leicester City. It's a six Sorry, pointer. Guess. This is a six pointer. Ooh, this is a, oh God. This is a big <laughs> one. Um, Leicester. Lester wins, finally rid of the horrible tyrant Claudio Ranieri. Final score, 4-0, with both of their forlorn starters getting goals. Bart, Vardy and Mares with a brace each. 4-0. Andy. Ooh, um, I'm going to go 2-1 hole. Wow. Okay. And Craig? Craig? I'm sorry, Tom. I had you guys. I had you guys alternating so that it would be fair, and I didn't realize that uh, the Craig's family was so fucking important. So, so Tom. <laughs> Wait, Tom, what do you that? think? I didn't hear what you said. Um, about what? <laughs> Who's playing? Who am I predicting for? Oh, hole at Leicester City. Hole at Leicester. Uh, nil nil. <laughs> this is breaking down. Remember when we said this was going to be an hour long pod? That 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 was a long time ago. I'm sorry, I didn't hear what you Guys, said. Guys, the <laughs> only way up is the only way is up. Yeah, exactly, Tom. I'm sorry. Could you repeat that? Nil nil. Nil nil. Okay, easy enough. Everton at Spurs. Zero, zero. Sorry. Zero, <laughs> no. zero. We, we will accommodate you in this fashion. Uh, Everton at Spurs, 2-2. Two, two. I predict that Spurs are starting a downward spiral now, and Pochettino will be poorly rested after having to pick his mother up late at night from her latest client. So it will be 2-2. Two to two. Andy. Uh... That was pleasant. Oh, I, I, oh two one. You put a little more mucus into that. Dude. Two one Spurs. Okay, and Tom. Yeah, one nil Spurs. Ninety eighth minute Ericsson free kick. Ninety eighth. <laughs> yeah. So, so that, who, okay, Tom. Whose penis got time. broken for that to go to the ninety eighth minute? I was waiting for them to play Ghent in the week and just like score in the last minute to take them through, but they didn't. That's, and we can laugh at them. We can. They did not. City at Sunderland. Sunderland sucks really, really bad, but this kind of has a weird feel to it, so I'll say that they only lose 2-1 to one to City <laughs> instead of what I would have gone with. Andy. Yeah, I'm going to say 2-0 City. And Tom. I think, yeah, Sunderland are bad, but they might do better than usual, so 4-0 City. Spanked <laughs> <laughs> at home. Half of the half of their fans, their supporters, will be gone by the fiftieth minute, <laughs> um, based on a track record. And then finally, we get to pick another Arsenal game, unlike last week. Uh, Arsenal at Liverpool. I would like to delay my pick until four thirty p.m. UK time on Saturday because I want to see <laughs> if Iwobi, Theo, and Coquelin are all starting. If so, we lose three nil. Um, if not, then it's going to be two two. What's this but, Iwobi thing? Go into it. He. <laughs> We have better <laughs> options right now. He's he's he's. he's I don't agree. Of, I don't disagree. But this seems he's, like he's, he's one of these guys that have that Thank have. Thank you, Tom. I've been it too. He hates him. No, I do not hate him. I think he. I think he's a fantastic young prospect. <laughs> but we have Welbeck healthy now. We have Lucas healthy now, and and Wilby just hasn't learned how to track back. So when we're playing against a Liverpool or a Bayern Munich, for example, he he sh- he should be on the bench. And watch, watch how it's done. And, and, and so I just, th- I think having him in the lineup when he shouldn't be at this stage is a, is a signal of intent. And in this case, if, if he's starting against Liverpool, it's the same signal of intent that we showed to Bayern. And I think they'll rip us apart. Um, and we, it's not because it's bad. It's yeah. because his game is limited and still developing. How about that? We had so many Nigerian listeners until you started hating on Awobi. Well, they, they don't like the pod because you, are accusing me of hating a Wobie, but I because, because all three of those start. I, uh, we we need to move on with this. So I'm going to go three 0 to Liverpool. Unfortunately, <laughs> wow. sorry. Uh, oh, th- going away to Liverpool uh, for any team you've been scared stuff, about this game for a while. I have because tactically we're just absolutely atrocious right now. I'm going to go. You've been, you've, been, you've been shitting your pants, which is actually much more professional than what Mems did during the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you at I'm, least don't have to leave the room for that. I hate to do it, but I'm going to go 2-0 Liverpool. Well, 
Tommy, you gonna are you gonna save us from this negativity? Yeah, two 0 Arsenal. There you go. Just, oh, two 0 at Anfield, huh? Yeah, I, I can remember a game where that happened. Mate, I was there, weren't you there? <laughs> yeah, I was. I was. Def- I was actually in London at least, but uh, yeah, no, I wasn't one of the forty-five million people that were there. Um, but I was in uh, old. For- <laughs> If that makes you feel old. Yeah, it does. <laughs> I think it I was does. I have, I, I, have a, I have a friend, John Horlick, uh, who's a fr- friend of the podcast, who was born three or four weeks, I think four weeks before that game. And the joke is that, you know, I, and I was 16 or 17 that night. It was one of the best nights of my life, girl-wise, uh, Arsenal-wise. And, you know, Please elaborate. <laughs> well, uh, I won't elaborate other than to say that the one thing that John and I have in common is that, that night we were both sucking on a couple of titties. Oh, and uh, and I cannot let my son listen to this podcast now. <laughs> no. Although that that ship sailed probably about an hour ago, yes. um, <laughs> and we might have to cut that comment. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's staying in. That's Speaking staying of, in uh, for our lady listeners. Uh, I, I have the utmost respect, and I never call them those. All right, preview of the upcoming game, Liverpool. Um, I think we've kind of previewed that game already, but Tom, how do we how do we win that game, Tom? We got to start. Uh, we, we score more than Liverpool. And how do we do that with a work rate line up front? Welbeck, Alexis, Lucas up front. It's got him. Um, I don't. Oh, okay. It, I mean, serious. I was going to say we put the round thing and the netty thing, but I'll be more serious <laughs> than that. Um, I, I, I genuinely cannot fathom why Lucas Perez is not starting. I was asked, obviously, as, as people know, which a fair amount of Spanish football, and uh, people asked me when he signed what's this guy about, like, what's what's good about him, and I said he's quick, he's, he's inventive, he's good on the ball, he takes shots from places where you wouldn't expect him to take shots, and you just have to look at the goals that he has scored to realise that all of that was in fact true, and I wasn't just making it all up. Um, and I can't fathom the reason why he's not starting, maybe it's because he was admittedly a panic buyer and Wenger brought him in as depth and hasn't got the faith in him yet to play him. Maybe he's a poor trainer, but Patrick Vieira was a poor trainer and then look what he did during the matches. So I, I cannot understand why he's not starting. Danny Welbeck, I agree, needs to come in. I'm on the I'm on the side of the fence where Ozil needs to be taken out of the squad completely at the moment. Yeah, and Maybe because, that's where Welby can play then. And that's what I was going to go on to next. So, so Mike has stolen my thunder there and Iwobi Sorry. needs to, Yeah, that's fine. Iwobi needs needs to go into that number 10 role. Uh, Lucas needs to play on the left. Welbeck should play on the right. Or either or. I mean, it depends. I don't know why we've got this stupid way of painting our team instead of letting it flow on the pitch and letting the wingers change sides and, and move around with freedom. I don't know why it's so set in stone that they need to stick to those positions. And Alexis needs to carry on up front. And I think that El Nene needs to play if he's fit, but he might be out for a while from the sounds of it, which is oh, great. I've heard three weeks, which means three months. Yeah. yeah, which means, yeah, never seeing him play again. I mean, he's probably in the same room as Santi right now. Um, but uh, then in that case, I think that obviously Xhaka comes back in for his Premier League game uh, back after his suspension. Uh, and I think he needs to be, he has, unfortunately, he has to go next to, to Coquelin still. Then he's just having a nightmare of a season. shambo has got to go there, but it, you, you won't see that with Coquelin healthy. No, I mean, you won't, and that's why I say I would go with Ox, um, even though that's actually, in fairness, if I'd go with Ox, I'd put him next to Coquelin rather than Xhaka, because I think if you put Xhaka and, and Ox, you're, you're just too exposed defensively. Both of them aren't the best tacklers, so against a, a side like Liverpool, you could become extremely uh, ripped apart. Um, so it's, that's what I go for. Defence picks itself at the moment. Uh, I think Gibbs has to come back in still. His, his pace is, is invaluable, and Monreal seemingly on a bit of a slide. So, oh, and Ospina, I'd continue Ospina. Um, mm. I'm sorry, I'm on Ospina's side at the moment. Um, yeah. Ch- checks uh, just, a, just a little bit, yeah, at the moment. So I don't I'd, think you could really go wrong either. either well, I mean, I, no, yeah, no, you, no, could, no. you could go wrong, but I think... Uh, you go wrong either way is what you're you want, Yeah, you won't, <laughs> you won't get an argument for or against that could be possibly very well considered for either goalkeeper because you know, mm. there was a game that Petr Cech played a couple of weeks ago with the first good game in a while where I felt he got to some balls that Ospina might not have been able to. So you just don't know. They're just 1-1A one one at this point. Boys, what if we did this? What if we did this? Welbeck on the left, Lucas up front, Theo on the right, Alexis, Alexis. in the number 10 with, well, what's inevitably going to be uh, 
the Cochlin Jaka, I would go with the Ox and Jaka myself. But what if we put Alexis in the number ten role? Not against Liverpool, I wouldn't think. And and you know, I'm saying all this by the way. The the, the caveat is, I promised after week six of the season that I was not going to make informed comments as though I knew anything about the lineup because I was just hammering Arsene Wenger for starting Alexis up top. Uh, you know, what are you doing? What do you, you know, put Giroud in there? So I, at that point, I promised I wasn't going to do this anymore. So I, take that with a grain of salt. I have no fucking idea what I'm talking about. Top, yeah, I, I still have my number 10? I mean, I, I think he can play that position um, as a second striker. But I'm not sure Lucas is the right person to play in front of him. Um, I think that you'd have to play Giroud. You need more a physical player that you could play off, uh, but play Lucas wider. But I mean, I'd like to see it. I mean, I'm, just because I think that's what you should do doesn't mean it's the right thing to do. So there's no reason why we, we couldn't try it and, and, and see what happens, yeah. Not to be patronising whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we are uh, officially running long, so let's wrap it up. Um, Craig, hopefully you're listening back. We really appreciate you taking time out of your day. Tom, absolute pleasure. Thank you so much. Oh, no problem. I'm sure you'll have fun cutting out all the swear words. No, no, no they stay in. (laughs) We only cut out we only cut out mistakes and when Andy runs out to save dogs' lives and stuff. That's the only thing we. Have <laughs> but uh, and, and I'm off to watch I'm off to watch my son play for the uh, the Virginia State ODP team. He's going to be playing right wing. Will he be Theo or will he be Alexis? That that much remains to be determined. And the sky is about to open up like you wouldn't believe. So I'm not so sure we're even going to get this one in. But it has been a pleasure, guys. Um, Thanks for another great podcast. Listeners, you can find us on iTunes. Uh, as always, we have lots of uh, great regular iTunes listeners. We did get a late start on putting our podcast on YouTube, so our YouTube numbers are, uh, what do we call them? Uh, Shit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, uh, and we would appreciate your help in making them less shit by subscribing and uh, maybe giving us some comments. So um, that is about it. Have a good week, boys. You too, mate. Bye. And come on, you Gooners.